Now I'd like to turn to, uh, to Jamie uh, Bothwell. Uh, Jamie loves underbody of passenger cars. And tonight I think he's gonna talk to us about uh, the smaller trucks that uh, pass various passenger uh, cars have. Jamie, welcome. Uh, thanks. All right, so tonight we're gonna talk about passenger car trucks from the lightweight era. And again, um, these would be cars that would be like, say, Pullman sleepers. Uh, maybe if you bought your railroad, bought lightweight coaches. Um, we're not going to deal with any sort of proprietary trucks for various railroads. I know the Pensy love their own trucks. We're not going to deal with those. Uh, you know, the Redding truck, uh, I think Clark pointed out that one truck I, picture I showed you last week is called a Taylor truck. So anyway, that's where we're going tonight. So here we go. Okay. So I talked about this a little bit last week. This happens to be a freight car, but I found it in my collection of photographs. So I thought I'd throw it in there. So again, the bolster is kind of in here in the middle someplace, uh, but the truck is also bearing on this surface here. And of course there's another one on the other side, right? So the truck is bearing on more than just the bolster. And of course that happens with passenger cars too. So. Okay, so let's see, I guess we have to click that. All right, so the Pullman truck code and why we can ignore it. All right, so the first number is gonna be the number of wheels. The second number is gonna be the bolster, okay? So essentially we've got two, you know, every truck we're gonna talk about tonight is gonna to be a four wheel truck. Uh, we have one bolster trucks and three bolster trucks. So it's either gonna be a 41 or a 43. So no big uh, relevation there, okay? Uh, the first letter deals, deals with the wheelbase. As you can see, uh, A, B, C, or N is eight foot six, okay? So it's a, a seven foot, eight foot, nine foot. Most of the trucks that you would find uh, under your lightweight cars would be either the, uh, most of them, I guess, are technically nine foot or eight foot six. So there's a few eight footers out there. Okay, uh, the second letter is the pedestal opening. Um, so we can ignore this because as modelers, you know, the difference between a fraction of an inch of a pedestal opening uh, or even an inch of a pedestal opening is going to make a bit of a difference for us. Okay, so, so again, the second letter is something wrong, uh, something that we just don't need to worry about. The third letter, if it's a P, stands for PRR. Uh, the truck has a small elliptical spring. You'll see some pictures of this. If you model the Pensy, you need to worry about this, but if you don't, then you don't, right? So anytime you see a D, it's disc brakes. And anytime you see an O, it's an outside swing hanger. Uh, so again, you know, you'll to know what you're looking at. Uh, these are are both fairly obvious things, and and so if you know that they exist, then you know whether the Pullman truck says it's a D or an O, you can pretty much know that all by yourself. All right. If the code ends with an 11, the trucks have six by 11 bearings as opposed to five and a half by 10 bearings. Another again, something that we as modelers could just not care less about. Pullman was very concerned with these kind of things because if the truck, if the car broke down somewhere and somebody had to put a new bearing in it, they needed to know what size. But we as modelers, we don't need to know that. So um, now the problem with the Pullman truck code is it doesn't talk about anything that we really need to know other than the, the, the two bol one bolster or three bolsters or whether it's discs or outside swing hangers. Um, you know, so again, all this other stuff, um, you know, we'll talk about uh, shock absorbers in a little bit, but that stuff is not mentioned. Okay, so if you look, here's our wood beam truck from the 1880s. Again, see, saw something like this uh, in last week's program. You'll notice that it has helical uh, equalizer springs. It has a drop equalizer on the bottom, and it has an elliptical bolster spring in the middle. So then we move ahead to the 1930s, and what do we have? A drop equalizer, an elliptical spring and a heel a elliptical bolster spring and helical springs. Okay, so it's essentially the same truck as we've been seeing from the 1890s. The big difference is now we have a brake cylinder that's attached to the truck. Okay, so previously the brake cylinder was under the car, but in the lightweight era, we started attaching them directly to the truck. This is the 43R. This is our four wheel, three bolster, R stands for roller bearings. Now, what happened with the roller bearings, the R for that roller bearing thing is that pretty much by the post-war years, every single truck was coming with roller bearings, so they dropped the R. So again, more Pullman truck code that we just don't really need to know about. 
Uh, this type of truck was used by the Pennsylvania Railroad and the New York Central under their re 1938 re-equippings of the Broadway Limited and the 20th Century Limited, respectively. Um, the Santa Fe also used this truck, and it has a single brake cylinder. The Union Pacific had some trucks that looked much like this, except that they had two brake cylinders per side instead of just the one. Now, um, these trucks were supposedly very comfortable riding, great trucks but they were particularly picky to adjust. So these came on the 1938 Broadway Limited. And when Pensy reordered some of those cars a couple of years later, they didn't have this truck anymore. So this truck was supposedly a great truck, except the railroads didn't like it because it was too hard to adjust. Here is an S-Scale 43R. Again, we have a beautiful model of this in S-Scale, although I believe they're sold out. Here's our single brake cylinder. Um, these things are, termed a couple of the bearing boxes are termed as some people call them Napoleon hat bearing boxes because they look like Napoleon's hat. And so the, the technical name for them in Pullman literature is something like a winged bearing box. I forget exactly how they term that, but anyway, 43R. Uh, as I said, this is supposed to have four wheels, which obviously it does, and three bolsters. And for the life of me, I can't figure out what counts as the other two bolsters. So, and again, obviously when we put them on a model, they really only have one bolster. Here's something I'm calling the 41 truck. So this is what replaced the 43R. Uh, again, you see the basic parts of it, okay? You got a brake cylinder on the truck still. You have a shock absorber now, and you also have a bolster anchor. So these, this is the post-war version of this truck. And what you've seen is you've got the same elliptical springs and you've got the drop equalizer, but instead of the elliptical, I'm sorry, I said helical springs. Uh, instead of the elliptical spring, you have a shock absorber and you also have a bolster anchor. And what that bolster anchor does is it picks up the uh, sideways, some of the, some of the side forces on the truck. Uh, the shock absorber, now again, if you wanna get picky about your models, these essentially came in three types. We'll talk about them a little later. Now, the thing about the bolster anchor is the bolster anchor, like, you know, there's a piece in the middle and a piece out toward the bearing. That piece toward the bearing should point at the middle of the car. So I know that this truck, you know, there's the, the middle of the car is this way on this photograph because the bolster anchor points toward the middle of the car. Now, a number of truck manufacturers have saved money by using the same uh, die on both sides of their truck. And so you always get one bolster anchor that points the wrong way. So, you know, when you look at the two trucks, one's pointing toward the middle, but the other one's pointing toward the end. Your higher quality models will have that problem fixed. We in S scale uh, take care of that because we have to add our own bolster anchors to the trucks that we have. And so by doing that, they automatically get correctly, well, they don't automatically, but you can certainly correctly position them. Okay. So this is a later model of 41. This is a 41 ND. Again, this is a disc brake truck. You don't see the brake shoes out here. So that's why it has a D. Uh, it has the N because it's an eight foot, six inch wheelbase. This one has an I-beam drop equalizer. This became popular a little later, maybe in sort of the 1950s. Um, they started shipping these with this I-beam the, as a drop equalizer. So you can see the shape of the I-beam is, is a, uh, I'm sorry, the shape of the drop equalizer is an I-beam. That's what my little note says. Okay, so here's a 41 NP11 truck. Uh, again, P means Pennsylvania. Um, this particular car happens to be a Norfolk and Western car, but it was bought to uh, run through on the Pennsylvania Railroad. And so it was, it, the trucks came equipped to Pennsylvania specifications. So again, the Pennsylvania Railroad hated anything uh, adjustable. They didn't want to adjust shock absorbers or uh, rotary snubbers, again, we'll get to those in a sec. So they put in uh, this little tiny elliptical spring and that kept the sideways motion of the truck in check. And so then, uh, you know, the, the, the leaf spring, um, the, the leaves of metal rub over each other and the amount of friction in there uh, does the shock absorbing for you. So the, the spring is its own shock absorber. So they didn't, they didn't have to worry about that. All right, so here's, oh, I have two, Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so here's a 41 NP11 with an I-beam equalizer. So this is again, the Pensy truck. You see the elliptical spring here. 
And uh, again, you can tell that the middle of the car is this way because the Volser anchor is pointing toward the middle of the car. Uh, but this, this is the same, in Pullman's mind, this is the same truck as the last truck, except this has that I-beam drop equalizer, okay? There you go, I-beam. Okay, now, just so you know, when we talked earlier about pedestal openings, the pedestal opening is the width between here and here. And as I said, for our purposes, a fractional difference in, in you know, a fractional inch difference in that space is quite irrelevant to our modeling purposes. <laughs> okay, so here's a 41O truck. So O means outside swing hanger. So you look right here, these are your outside swing hangers. Those other trucks, those 41 trucks that I showed you, they also have swing hangers. They're just inside of the side frames. This was a development, um, I believe it originated in EMD diesels and it got put on the train of tomorrow, which was one of the earliest applications of these. Uh, the New Haven tried them and absolutely loved them. New Haven put every, after they used one of these, they, they, put, uh, they put them on every passenger car they bought. Um, they did a survey of their customers. The customer said these ride better. So, so the New Haven put them on all their new cars. Santa Fe replaced old trucks with these. Okay, so Santa Fe loved outside swing hanger trucks so much, they, re they went on a replacement program. Again, uh, these things tend to wear. They, the, having the outside swing hangers put them where they were easily maintained and easily viewed. And so that was a definite uh, improvement. Okay, so here again, 41.0 truck, here's the swing hanger. That's what the swing hanger is. On the other 41 trucks, again, you, the, 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 the side frame is further out, the swing hangers are inside. Okay, so again, in a model, in model form, these next three things are gonna be really, really small. But, you know, that's what I'm here for, so you gotta talk about it. This thing is called a hood eye. That's how you say that word, it's hood eye rotary snubber. So this is a rotary shock absorber. And so like here you see the shock absorber part of it and it's got this arm that comes out and as the truck would rock, that thing would, you know, the twisting of the inside pieces of those would absorb the shock. So they had, you know, the internal mechanism in there would uh, help out with that. So Hudai rotary snubber. There's another photo of it, okay? This is a hood eye friction snubber, okay? So this is like a tube and what you can see at the bottom of the tube is a spring, okay? So if you see that spring sticking out the bottom, then you know it's a hood eye friction snubber. If it just looks like two tubes, then it's a Monroe shock absorber, all right? Um, as a general survey, I would say maybe the Monroes are most popular with the Hudai rotaries being the second uh, and the Hudai frictions are definitely uh, a distant third. But I was at a railroad museum a couple of years ago and I walked down the row of three passenger cars they had on display. The first one had rot rotary snubbers, the second one had Hudai friction and the third one had Monroe shock absorber. They had one of each type on three cars directly in a row. So. Um, and two of those were Great Northern cars. Uh, and so, you know, obviously the Great Northern had, a, a, you know, it wasn't like the, the Great Northern didn't standardize and only have one kind. So, um, you know, I can't tell you other railroads, but certainly it was sort of a preference thing. So, and that's all I got for you today. So it's about my 15 minutes. Any questions? Uh, Jamie, on the arm that, uh points towards the middle of the car did that have rubber washers yes in it to yeah. to absorb yeah. forward and backward shocks yes okay. yes that's yeah they had a big fat rubber washer in there that uh that's kind of what it did okay that, that that's what it looked like now did that need period did all those rubber snubbers need periodic replacement because rubber parts tend to dry out yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know. I've never read anything about the maintenance of them, but I'm sure that they probably did. So, you know, that would have been something that would, they would have had to lay the car up and, you know, do some work on it. So I, I, I can imagine, but, you know, I mean, I, 
they do last a long, long time. Cause I, you know, you see them in railroad museums and they're there. So, but yeah, that's certainly that, that is a big, big chunk of rubber.